Peace, y'all, and welcome to Oddly Familiar, the classical episode. To celebrate our 10th episode, we are going to have a classical extravaganza. I will be avoiding dance games or other rhythm style games. Most of those games like DDR or Pump It Up have the titles of the songs right in the game. And by the way, I do like some classical songs. However, I am not necessarily a classical aficionado and it's only for fun anyways. So let's get started. For number 10, we have a double whammy. I'm getting this one out of the way early, but it's probably my favorite tune on the list. And the first game it comes from is Spelunker on the NES. When the ghost shows up, you will hear this. This is known as Mysterioso Pizzicato, also known as the villain or the villain's theme. This piece of music's first known use was in 1914 when it was included in a collection of music for silent films. You could almost say early stock music. This has become known and used in various films, TV shows, and yes, video games. Here is the villain's theme. Now the second part of this one comes from a classic NES game, and it has one of the best overall soundtracks in my opinion. Here is the boss theme from Wizards and Warriors, composed by David Wise. Our number 8 spot is one of the most popular games on the list. Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. Here is the invincibility music. This is a popular one, and that's the last time I will say that in this episode, because all of the classical songs in this episode are popular, or they wouldn't have been used so many times in so many video games. Here is the Can Can, or the Infernal Gallop. Super Mario Land was released in 1989 as a launch title for the Game Boy. This music was composed by Hirokazu Tanaka. This is not the first time he has appeared on Oddly Familiar, but this one is a lot more obvious. Lucky number 7 is one that comes from the 1993 game Arrow the Acrobat. Here is the background song from Fun Park 2. This song should sound familiar because like every song on the list, it was done on purpose. This one comes from the 1942 piece of music, Saber Dance. The soundtrack for Arrow the Acrobat was composed by Rick Fox, and I think it's safe to say he was inspired by Saber Dance. This game does appear on multiple consoles as well as the Game Boy Advance. I played the SNES version because I thought it sounded better, but here is the Sega Genesis version, Circus Act 1. Our number 6 spot is a great NES game with even better music. It's now the second time it has appeared on this list. Here is the title menu theme from Wizards and Warriors by David Wise. If you recognize it, that's not a surprise. This is one of the most popular organ pieces ever composed. Traditionally ascribed to Johann Sebastian Bach, here is Toccata and Fugue.
personally, this is one of my favorite video game soundtracks. Wizards and Warriors has a short yet effective soundtrack. It's an early NES game, but very good nonetheless. I give David Wise a thumbs up for a great soundtrack. Number 5 comes from a game that has been featured a few times in this series. Here is Tetris on the Game Boy, the Type-C Music. I do gotta say, Type-C is my favorite tune on Tetris. I would always pick Type-C. As a kid, I never knew this was just a remake of a classical song by Johann Sebastian Bach. Tetris is full of good music, and this is not the only song that inspired Tetris. Check out some of the previous episodes if you want to see some other Tetris songs that sound oddly familiar. Unlucky number 4 comes from a game that's known for having classical music, so maybe it will get its own episode one day if I can find 10 songs from it. But for now, here is the Lemmings Stage 11 theme from the Super Nintendo version. This one may be my personal favorite classical song on the list. If you haven't picked it up by now, it's the Turkish March by Mozart. The Lemmings is a fun game, and it used to have even more tracks that were inspired by popular songs. But the devs made the decision to take out the offending tracks, and use tracks that they cannot be sued for. Number 3 is one that comes from the Super Nintendo. It's one of the more sought after games on the console, and for good reason. Here is a track named Bandit's Way from the Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo. I think most people will know that one, classical fan or not. It's Russian Dance from the Nutcracker Suite by Tchaikovsky. The Super Mario RPG soundtrack was composed by Yoko Shimomura, the same lady who composed the Ken and Guile themes from previous oddly familiar episodes. I do want to clarify, in episode 1, I said Ken should fire his composer, and that line has upset many people. The only thing I can say is, Ken can't fire anyone, because Ken didn't hire anyone. Ken is a video game character. It was a joke. Up next, in at number 2, we have a classic. If you have ever played Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, you will know all of the boxers come out to their own theme songs. Well, once you reach Don Flamenco, you will hear this. Once you hear the classical version of this, you will recognize it from many places. Nintendo has a thing for classical music it seems, because they have been on this list a lot. Here is the Carmen Overture. This one slipped by me for years. Only recently did I go back and play some Punch-Out and I heard that melody. I set out to find out what his theme song was, and luckily it wasn't hard to find. Our top spot is no secret. 
It's a well-known case and deserving of the top spot. Composed by Tapi Iwase, also known as Tapi, here is the Metal Gear Solid theme song, which has appeared in multiple Metal Gear games. This theme song was later removed when Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots was released. Norihiko Hibino stated in an interview with EGM that the theme was removed because of the controversy and possible legal issues with Russian composers. Here is The Winter Road. Now if you don't hear it in these snippets, I recommend listening to the full songs and comparing them for yourselves. Here is footage of Hideo Kojima actually hearing it for the first time. I do want to clarify one thing on this because I am a music producer myself, so I am speaking from experience. Hideo Kojima had nothing to do with this being stolen. He hired a composer and told that composer what kind of music he wanted. When the composer comes back with the song, Hideo can accept it or ask him to change it for any number of reasons. All this means the composer came back with the stolen song and Hideo accepted it not knowing it was stolen. The only thing Hideo can be blamed for is trusting his composer to do original work, which is hardly something you can really hold against him. Blame the composer for passing off stolen material as original. Hideo Kojima is innocent. So with this episode coming to a close, I would like to say thanks to all the viewers who made it through all 10. When I first started the series, I didn't know how many episodes I would end up doing, but I think 10 episodes is a mini milestone. So thanks for watching and look forward to another 10 episodes. I am ICC. Peace.